Good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. Today we're going to make homemade old-time Scrapple. Yes, and a lot of you I know don't know what Scrapple is, so we're going to go through it, but it's yummy. Now this has a lot of ingredients. Please pause and write them down, but I'll go over them as I use them in the video. Now let's get cooking. Well, I've got my ingredients here assemble to start the process but let's take just a second first and let me talk about what is scrapple scrapple is one of those foods that I call you've heard me call before poor people's food um, it's a food that people use to use up everything they had and farmers um, in the Pennsylvania Dutch area and other areas that raised hogs, pigs, uh, used to say they used everything but the squeal. So after they'd made sausage and had hams up to cure, what was left could be made in Pennsylvania Dutch country into scrapple. Uh, where I grew up in the south, it could be made into something called souse meat or, oh my god, no, head cheese. And no, I don't eat head cheese. I'm sorry. Um, had a bad experience <laughs> with head cheese. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with pork. Now, we no longer have to use up all the scraps, but a lot of folks still raise pigs, and they want to use up the scraps because they don't want to waste anything. It takes a lot of time and money uh, to raise hogs, and if you don't get the full use of them, uh, it's not worth doing. So... The original recipe, and what I, what I have here is a combination of several different recipes. Um, I sort of put together what I thought um, would, would give me the flavor and the texture that I wanted. But I, I don't have leftover pieces and entrails and that sort of thing. So I went to the store and, and bought some pork. And you can use any pork that you want, but the recipe calls for 10 pounds of pork butt the recipe that I'm mostly focusing on, which by the way, I, I found um, on a Guy Frieri, Fieri site. Um, but I've, I've changed it a little, uh, putting in some other things that I found. So I've bought, right here I have about 10 pounds of pork, and I bought what was on sale, and these are pork butts, and this is um, a fresh shank, and that's going to add up to right about 10 pounds. So most of the things in this recipe are going to be about or approximately because the recipe calls for one whole pork butt which can run anywhere from six to eight pounds. So I wanted to go or six to ten pounds. I wanted to go ten pounds because I want it more meaty. But you also need to be sure to add something that's got a lot of marrow and um, collagen in it, uh, something that will make it very uh, stiff, help make it stiff. So I have here some pork feet. You can get the shanks, the hocks, whatever. I got the pork feet because they're really, really cheap. Then we have a carrot, and then I have three stalks of celery. Back here I have two onions. I have some bay leaves. And most of the recipes call for black peppercorns. I have these lovely dried peppers that my friend Zach Ardania from Debbie's Back Porch sent me. And I'm going to chop up some of them without the seeds. I'll save the seeds for later. Um, and use that instead of black peppercorns. Partly because I want to try the different flavor. And partly because um, my black peppercorns are sealed in a shaker and I can't get them out. So, our first step is to make, to cook these all in a broth. And I'm going to cut them up and put them in my roaster. Uh, and then when all of that's done, I'll come back. Now, you can do it in a stock pot. I'm doing it in a roaster because it's so very hot outside. I don't want to turn my stove on. The stock pot's a little bit uh, cooler and it's very convenient for me to use. So I'm going to get all this chopped up. I'm going to get it in the roaster 
and then I'm going to come back to you. Okay, here we go. I have the pork cut up. Um, it can be roughly cut. doesn't have to be big, and you leave all the bones and the fat and everything in it right now. I've got my celery, three stalks of celery, a carrot, three bay leaves. I put about a third of one of these nice peppers in it. Oh, and I need three tablespoons full of salt. Uh, I'll put that on the ingredient list. Now I'm going to fill this up just to the point that the meat is barely covered. And I, I don't want a lot uh, because I'm going to use the broth and I want it to be good and strong. And I'm also going to um, uh, I'm not going to do the roasting step that you normally do when you're making broth. I want this meat to be soft and tender and uh, not have any crunchy bites on it at all. So we're going to turn this on the roaster, put the lid on, and let it cook. I'm going to let it cook overnight at a low temperature, making sure that it stays in the safe uh, temperature range of over 140 degrees uh, just like I would cook broth overnight um, if you're using a stock pot you probably don't want to do that I have this because it's an electric electric roaster and I keep it on uh, my ceramic countertop uh, but we're gonna cover it we're gonna cook it slowly I'm gonna cook it all night you might um, if you're cooking it during the daytime and you can watch it about um, three to four hours at a simmer. Should get you what you want. I'm gonna cover this and I'll be back in the morning. Well, it's morning and we're gonna check and see what we have. Uh, this has been cooking very slowly all night on about 300 and you'll see what I have here is very tender pork. It's about the consistency at this point of pulled pork. Uh, back in my grandmother's time and in old times, uh, we would have not used this quality of pork. We would have used all kinds of scraps rather than uh, lose them. But we're going with some really good quality pork here, and I hope that gives us a good quality product. So I'm going to take it out and put it over here on a cookie sheet. I'll be back when I get all of the good bits out. I don't want to take any of the carrots or celery or bay leaves. I just want the meat. And then when I get all the meat out, I'm going to strain the uh, broth and, and get those other bits out. I'm going to need about a gallon of finished broth. And I'll have just a little bit over a gallon here. See how rich that is? Our ancestors found ways to get every bit of nutrition out of everything they had. Because it meant the difference maybe in making it through the winter and keeping your family alive. Now here's this beautiful rich broth. I'm going to refrigerate it uh, and when it chills I'll skim most of the fat off. I don't have to get it all but I'll get what I can. It won't be in the fridge long enough to form a, a crust with the fat. So I've let this meat cool about 15-20 minutes enough that I can handle it and I'm going to take all the lean meat out taking away the obvious fat and, and grind it up in the food processor with my spices. All this is approximate and to your taste. Two tablespoons crushed red pepper, a teaspoonful of rosemary, a half a teaspoonful of black ground pepper, a half a teaspoonful of cumin. And the sage is um, from my garden and fresh, but you can use dried. You just want to use a little less. And over here in the roaster, I've measured back out a gallon of the broth. And we're going to put all my spices in to the um, food processor and I'll put all the spices in with the first batch and this is going to take three or four batches uh, but it'll all get mixed together so I'm just going to put the spices in to start with uh, spices and herbs and you know my suggestion would be that you flavor this like you do your sausage if you make your own sausage but you want it to be just a little bit more than you would with sausage because this is going to be uh, mixed with cornmeal. And you'll notice at this time I didn't add any salt. I added salt into the broth and I'll taste it at the end and see if it needs more. 
So there's a good bit of fat on this and I'm not putting the fat into the food processor. I'm just getting the lean and you won't, you won't be able to avoid all the fat. Uh, there'll be some, but I'm trying to get the mainly lean pieces and, and uh, none of the skin and none of the vegetables that were left, just the nice, nicest, leanest bits, unlike my grandmother that used all of it. So now it's all in the food processor. Well, the first bit, I'll have to do this four times, I think. Uh, and we're gonna just chop this up. We don't wanna liquefy it. We want a rough chop. Um, and you know, if you don't have a food processor, you could do this by hand, but it's just so much easier with a food processor. Now, when I get this done, I'll show you. See, we've got little chunks of meat there, not liquefied, but cut small enough that it can go all through the mixture and be evenly distributed. I'm gonna put this over here in the broth, and then I will do the rest of this. You don't have to watch it, uh, and I'll come back to you when it's done. It's all in. I'm going to stir it and get all the lumps out. And as I'm doing this, you know, I'm thinking this is a uniquely unattractive dish right now. But from experience, I know it's going to be so good at the end. So I've evened that all out. I'll show you. I have about this much broth left. See, it's full of nice, rich bits. And our last ingredient is um, cornmeal, about two pounds six cups of cornmeal, not self-rising, medium grind or rough grind, uh, and you can use white or yellow, either one, or a mixture of the two. Now I'm going to add the um, cornmeal in about a cup, cup and a half at a time, and mix it in well. Let me mention, I know you've noticed this is a huge recipe. Uh, this will end up making about eight or nine pounds and you can easily cut it down to a half or even a third so I'm gonna look at this texture if you'll see how thick and creamy that is we have some little tiny chunks of meat but I've got all the cornmeal blended in now this needs to cook and, and I have it at a simmer it's hard to tell there's so much meat in this roaster for about 20 to 30 minutes long enough for the cornmeal to get creamy and if you had to have to add a little bit more broth I've reserved a little broth here I added about a quarter cup not much I just don't want it to stick and burn while I'm letting the cornmeal get creamy and this should stand up on a spoon be nice and thick like oh maybe oatmeal um, I'm gonna taste it and see if it needs salt and then we're gonna mold it up now what we're gonna do with this um, I'm oiling this pan. What we're going to do with this is use loaf pans as a mold. And if you don't have loaf pans, you can get some of those aluminum ones. Um, but this is going to make about five loaf pans. So, you know, I've cooked myself a year's worth of scrapple. Uh, but it has to mold at least 24 hours and really probably 36 is better. So I'm just going to spoon this in. You can see it has some substance. It stands up a little, but it's very smooth and creamy all the way through. And I'm going to fill this loaf pan almost to the top. You know, you could put this in a different kind of casserole. You could put it in like your 8x12 pan. This is easier because what we're going to do with this at the end is slice it and we want uh, a loaf pan gives you about the right size for slicing. So all done. You can see this gave me five. This one I did a little experiment with parchment paper. I want to see if it'll help unmold it better. Um, these go in their fridge uh, 24, 36 hours. After a couple hours though, you want to check it and see if any fat uh, or liquid has risen to the top and you'll spoon that off. And then I'm gonna cover them with aluminum foil. Um, and I'll check them one more time in an hour or so to see if any more fat has risen. Uh, it, it'll come up around the sides. I'll, I'll just show you how to, 
how I do that. We want to get it kind of dry. We want it to dry out so even the aluminum foil I don't put on very tightly so that it firms up. Like your corn mush patties, your polenta, you want the, the starch is going to help it firm up. We're back, it's the next day, and if you touch this, it feels very, very firm. And I'm going to go around the outside uh, and, and loosen it. it. It's still soft and creamy inside, but it has dried out a good bit. Uh, and I want to unmold this into a solid bar, I guess you'd call it. And it just works better if you go ahead and loosen it from the sides to start with. So there we go. And then I'm going to flip it. Now it's cold. I'm going to get a nice warm dish towel just to help loosen it. And I'll tell you in hindsight, the ones in the cast iron loaf pans flipped out much easier. And after about a minute, we'll take this off and there you go. There's your scrapple. It's a nice solid loaf that you can pretty easily slice. Let's do that. Now you want to slice this about a half inch, no more than a half inch thick. We're going to cook it crispy and it'll still be creamy inside. See how nicely that slices? I've got my cast iron pan warming. And you know, you can neaten that up a little bit if you want to. Let's fry this up and see what we've got. This is my Lodge cast iron breakfast griddle. And I've let some butter, about two pats of butter, heat up until it started getting a little golden. And I'm going to put these right on there. And you want it to start sizzling right from the beginning. Now, this is an already cooked product. Everything is cooked through. I'm just browning it and crisping it up. And that's about, actually it was about a minute and a half to two minutes. You want it to crisp without burning. You want it hot, good and hot all the way through. I'm going to loosen this carefully and give it a little flip. And that's almost brown enough. I'll probably flip it again. This one's trying to escape. There you go. So another minute and a half to two minutes and we'll check it. And I flipped it again because I wanted the other side a little bit browner. And you know this smells good. It smells mostly like sausage. Uh, it's a little bit milder than sausage so you can spice it more highly if you want. I'm going to take this up and I'm having breakfast for dinner. And this is mostly thought of as a breakfast food but you can serve it any time. Mmm, scrapple, dippy eggs, and homegrown tomatoes. Back here is the loaf. I'm going to slice this and flash freeze it and put it in bags. Uh, you don't want to leave it in the fridge more than two or three days. I'm going to drizzle a little maple syrup on here. You can serve this with apple butter uh, or jelly, anything you want to really. I suppose you could make gravy, but I think it's better this way. Let me slice into it and it has a little crunch but it's very soft in the middle. So let me show this to you. If you can see what we have there, we have crunchy and creamy all together. Let me taste this. And yes, it is what I remember. I lived in Pennsylvania Dutch country for just about a year when I was a teenager and I got hooked on Scrapple. You really can't find it around here. This is the only way I can get this comfort food from my childhood. You should try this. I think you'll like it. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. Hope to see you again tomorrow.